All right. In the um, in the service of making sort of anything that's uh, soundscapey, I uh, wanted to collect all the uh, interesting sound processing stuff that I use from time to time together in one place. So we have make a bleep here. Um, here I have a, a reverb implemented entirely in Max by this guy, uh, Turner Rev3. This is on Cycling 74's site. Here's the link. Um, and I just, I barely made, I just, I didn't make any changes really, but it's this massive system of tap ins, tap outs, and filters. I don't really understand how reverb actually works, but um, this guy implemented a decent sounding reverb. It is slightly computationally expensive, um, but it doesn't require any dependencies. This is why I show it in my classes because I can copy and paste it into a patch and it, it's in the patch. It's not a plugin or something. So we have make a bleep <clears throat> going into this reverb and then I have a volume, two volume controllers, one for the, the sort of reverb, the raw wet reverb sound and then one for the dry make a bleep sound. So, um, and then we're going into these so volume. The volume controllers actually use line, so they smooth out your volume changes, so you can't hear any clicks or anything. Um, then it goes through the filtering and EQ, which is just a smaller version of what we showed before with bi quad and filter graph. Um, so you can do a filter sweep or any sort of EQing you might want to do. I'll do that on the reverbed version. And then I've got a, two panners here. So the panner takes stereo in and gives you stereo out. Uh, but you tell it where you want to pan left and right. Um, very simple though, I mean, this panning is actually constant power panning and I find myself always searching for this. Uh, so I just made a, a reusable component here. Um, it does it uses sine and cosine to develop panning that's not linear. So you, I don't know if you can see it, but as I move left to right, the panning does not move in a linear fashion. So it's panning up and down the left and right channels, but um, it's based on um, some uh, cosine sine. I don't know how it's doing it. So yeah, it's based on sine waves. Um, <clears throat> so the cosine and the sine are the relationship between uh, the left and the right uh, channels. What that does is it makes it sounds like makes it sound like when you're panning, the thing is an equal equal distance away from you. Otherwise, things can sort of sound farther away. Anyway, it's a it's a nerdy way of doing panning. That's uh, kind of fun. Um, so we're, we have make a bleep going into the reverb and we can hear it here. So we can turn down the raw sound and just hear the reverb. And it sounds pretty good. We can hear just the raw sound. And we can mix them together to hear a little bit of raw and a little bit of reverb. And we can EQ that a little bit and pan things left and right a little bit. So then they finally end up going through this fade, fade gate. I don't know what this is just uses the matrix object, but it ramps up and down the one. It just lets me turn on and off the signal to gate the signal, but to do it with a ramp of 200, which gives you a little slope to your on and off. Uh, so you don't hear a click. Um, so you can turn the sound signal on and off. And then I'm going through this, this thing called tan H. So tan H, all right, tan H is a nice way to sweeten a signal and it's, it's sort of like uh, audio compression, dynamics compression. So when the volume's low, you turn the, the volume up and when the volume's high, you turn the volume down to, to compressing the levels. Um, but what TANH does is the hyperbolic tangent function on the audio signal itself. What that basically means is it's not gonna, if it gets too loud, it's not gonna just start clipping. It's gonna be, um, compressed at the loud level. The loud things are gonna be compressed a little bit. So I like to use TanH when I have the CPU to spare. It's a little expensive too, but it makes everything sound kind of nice. So, um, so we've got a, a bunch of stuff here that you can use to make uh, soundscapes with. You don't have to use Make a Bleep. This could be a sound file playing back. Uh, we could swap in the Make an Ah thing here. Let's, why don't we do that? Um, we'll swap in the make an odd time stretch here. Um, let's just, uh, yeah, let's grab this stuff. <clears throat> we'll swap out the make a bleep and swap in the time. Um, let's just keep this and this and we could swap that in. Let's hope that 
swapping in actually works. Let's see here. So that, and then we'll actually move these over. Move everything from make a bleep over to make an ah. All right, so let's um, set our time stretch at point two point two five, and we'll make sure it's actually loaded up in here. So I think we have to go ahead and click on that. And we could slow it down even more to point one something. Let's turn our liveness up a little bit and our output level. That's nice. Um, yeah, audio processing stuff here. We got EQ, we've got reverb, we've got panning, we've got a little bit of compression, a lot of things you can use to make a nice soundscape, uh, which we will do next.